Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our security launch day. So um, today we're going to talk about two new products that we uh, that FireEye acquired recently, and which we're going to present today. So uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Stan van Hof. I'm a, a pre-sales and uh, BDM at Exclusive Networks, and today I'm going to talk about maintenance security validation. Uh, later this afternoon, there's a second session where. Uh, Marco van der Aar, he's a FireEye Manion specialist, and he will talk about Cloud Advisory. So uh, thank you for joining us and taking the time to see what uh, what new products that we can uh, we can show you today. So let's kick off with the first session, uh, and uh, it's a technology I think is the the next big big thing in cybersecurity. The reason why I believe in security validation is because I know how many different products are installed in today's enterprise environment. There is an entire security stack that is deployed and it's been altered so many times that we usually just rely on a lot of assumptions. And, and we all know that assumptions is a mother of all screw ups. So why assume if we can actually measure something? So we assume that, that those vendors are actually um, they have data sheets, the spec sheets, and they're talking about their security, and they they claim that it works. Okay, so when you buy a solution, you you assume that everything works like they advertise. Um, we have a lot of tests that we can base our, our our acquisitions on, and we can say, okay, we we got tests from NSS Labs, AV Total, Gartner, you name it. it. It will give you an indication, but how sure are you that it's actually a match in your environment? So let's talk about your security stack. Do you know how well they perform in your environment? How well are they actually implemented? Because you may have bought the right technology, but what about an implementation? Your security is getting more and more complex with every new technology that you put in place. Your com configuration is changing all the time. I mean, we, we got your next gen firewall, we got sandboxing, we got EDR, mail security, Application firewall proxy, you name it. Those are all different actors in your security stack, and all those actors have has made their promises, and you just assume that they're actually right. So it's about time that we actually check if they are well implemented and that the right notifications are in place. And you have to make sure that every incident is getting noticed. Okay, so because blocking incidents is one thing, you all also want to be notified that there actually is something is something going on in your environment. I think uh, a good example was last year in the breach of the Maastricht University. There was a, a attack that was going on for a longer time. There were some stuff that was actually blocked, but it never was noticed by anyone of the security team because notifications were not correctly um, configured. So that's why we need to make sure that if something is blocked, you actually know that there is something going on in your environment. So let's start with actually measuring and knowing what was happening in the environment and stop assuming. We got different use cases where security validation um, proves its, its value. The first one is actually from a management perspective. Uh, and later on, we're going to see the more technical view. But from a management perspective, there are some things you need to know. Uh, how well is your security stack performing? I mean, are you able to measure it? Can you put a grade on it? Can you say, okay, my, my performance is like 90% and, and I need to invest some more to go to that 95 or 95 or 99%. So that's something you want to measure something and you want to make, you want to have a grade to, to know which part of my security stack is actually good and which part can, can be improved. So to improve it, we need to optimize everything we got right now. You, you, you invested a lot in the current technologies you have right now. Make sure you you, uh, you take out the best of it. Also, the people you have. The, the, those people have configured your configuration, but the people can make mistakes. So let's make sure that they don't make those mistakes. And if they were made, that we can quickly discover that and that we can optimize it and then we can uh, keep on fine tuning your, your security profiles. Our other use case is actually uh, rationalization. I mean, you get a budget, you spend it on, on different kinds or types of technology. Maybe you should invest more in, for example, your EDR technology and less in something else like, like a web proxy because 
when we test your security stack, you will see which technology is actually performing well and which one is actually not performing very good at that time. But it's important to keep on monitoring everything that's, that's happening in your environment. Because if, you, if you're a, an environment who does pen testing, and that can be once a year, every quarter, but it's still a moment, only one moment, it's just a snapshot of your environment at that time. With Manion security validation, we can continue monitoring and we can see if something actually is, is um, off point. So from the moment someone uh, is altering a configuration because it was necessary, but maybe they make a, a loophole or something, we can we can check that because we continuously are testing your security stack and if something happens we see it immediately and we can notify you that there's a misconfiguration for example and if you have a budget that was approved by the board you want to communicate that it's actually working i mean you you bought a lot of stuff you invest in it you want to communicate that value to uh to executives Or well, let's look at it from a technical point of view. Um, there are a lot of, of, of technical advantages of, of using security validation. One of those advantages is, is actually knowing how your network segmentation is, is actually working. Um, maybe there's some loopholes you didn't know of. Uh, we did a proof of concept with man validation and we directly um, noticed that the segmentation wasn't uh, working as the customer thought it was. There was a directly connection between different segments who shouldn't be able to talk to each other. So that's that's very valuable in, your, in an organization. The second use case is when you acquire a new company or you, you're expanding and you bought, bought an, a new piece of a company, um, you want to quickly merge. And there's always a lot of pressure because uh, there has to be an integration and, and management wants, wants will have a lot of pressure on you because uh, everything needs to work very fast. So this what use case is very good if you just want to check, okay, how is that uh, security in place for that company? And is it safe for us to connect to that uh, specific environment? The third use case is a very important one. It's the fine tuning of your seam. Um, why is that important? Because if you look at recent breaches, we found that in a lot of cases, a technology actually triggered at some point, but the SIEM was never notified. And why is that? Because most SIEM vendors, they, they bill you for, for each uh, amount of gigabytes of the logs that to receive. So you, you're not going to send every log file to the SIEM because that's too expensive. So you're going to yeah, cherry pick the right log files to, to be sent to the SIEM. Um, but in that case, you could miss something. So the fine tuning of your SIEM is, is very important. Uh, you want to make sure that if something happens and your technology blocks that, that they actually hit a coloration rule in, uh, in your SIEM. So it's a huge opportunity for everyone who uh, wants to fine tune their SIEM and then take the best out of it. How do we test your environment? Well, that's, that's the fourth use case. So we can automate pen tests. It's a, um, we have a library full of, of um, uh, this we can we can run on your your environment. Uh, we will show you that in the demo, but uh, we can we can simulate all kinds of different attacks. But uh, we can even run, run real malware in, of course, a protected environment, and look at how your security stack is performing against those types of attacks. And we can test almost everything of your security stack: your endpoints, your um, uh, sandboxing solutions, your, your next and firewalls, uh, proxy, you name it, we can we can validate that, how they're behaving. There are even MSSPs also who use our technology to prove actually to the customers that they need to make more investments in their current uh, security uh, stack. Um, or when they install something, they can run manual validation to, to make sure that everything is installed as it should be. So it's like a proof to the customer, like, okay, we did our job very well. We can see what the result is. And since we have the, we, we can match everything with the MITRE tech framework, it's like the biggest uh, industry standard nowadays. It's very good uh, use case also that you can use uh, security validation. 
So let's see what technology is behind our security validation. It all starts with our director. So the director is a manager, and from our manager, we, you run all the scenarios and you collect all the feedback. Okay, you can run that uh, on-prem or a virtual machine, or you can deploy it in AWS. The director will directly integrate with a lot of um, security technologies. It can be directly through an API or indirect uh, through log files. With those integrations, we know and we see everything that, that happens on that device. And we also know uh, what is blocked and isn't blocked. How do we do that? We deploy actors in your environment. Those actors could either be network, endpoint, email, or cloud. But those actors will generate uh, the traffic that is necessary for your environment to trigger on. So your security products will trigger on something we generate. And it doesn't matter if it gets blocked on the endpoint, for example, because we have actors placed in your entire environment. We can keep on testing other products in your security stack, either, uh, and it doesn't matter if it's blocked already at the first level. Um, I will show you later on what I mean with that. So our director collects all that information to, through the integration with all those technologies. And it gives you a visibility. And we know what happened, OK? If, if it's blocked or not, maybe it's not blocked, but it's detected by security technology. And if there was a detection, we actually gave an alert to the seam. And was there a correlation role on the seam or not? So we can measure it. Now we know what to do to improve our security on those devices. And then you can run it again. And then you can see, OK, what, what is now our, our, our catch rate, or did we improve on that? So this is a print screen of our environment with, with all types of different actors. Um, I know it's small in the demo. I will, I will go deeper into that. But this is how it looks like if you install those actors in your environment, it will map out your entire environment. You will see all your different security technologies in place. And that's how we can test uh, everything. So it, it all starts with our director. Okay, so our director has an integration with the scene, uh, with all the actors in place, and with every security technology in place. We have different types of actors. Okay, we got actors on the endpoint, uh, in the network, uh, internal, external, uh, on your mail security, and so on. So if we run a scenario, and a scenario can be in a, a certain attack we have seen in the wild. So for example, we're going to download a malicious file. We're going to execute that malicious code. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be lateral movement. It's going to be uh, an exploit for lateral movement, data exfiltrations, a, a typical attack with a, with a whole kill chain. So the director integrates with your Steam technology, with all the different actors who, who are placed uh, in your uh, network or installed on your endpoints. And in this way, we can, we can test your, um, for example, here's McAfee, we can test your endpoint solution because it's installed directly on the endpoint. But we can also in, in, uh, test your different network security uh, devices. Why? Because we generate traffic on the endpoint itself, but also in the network. We generate traffic in that network, so it doesn't matter if it gets blocked already on the endpoint, we still generate traffic on the internal side and the external side. So we, we know what your devices should, uh, should see and should block. So here we can see the entire flow of an attack, for example. And then we see all those devices are being tested. The director gets the response of all those uh, devices. He looks at the seam and he knows, OK, it was blocked or it was just not, uh, just notification, or it just missed the entire attack at all. The cool thing about managing security validation is we can either run in your live environment, which we use non-destructive malware, uh, for example, Mimikatz, uh, which is not dangerous to run uh, in your environment, or we could run destructive malware, but of course, it's in a protected environment. So it's a virtualized environment. 
completely separate uh, from your live environment. But here we can test with real destructive malware instead of just uh, simulations. So uh, how do we check if, if we're actually improving and make sure that something new like, like um, uh, an alteration in configuration does not affect or um, impact our security? Well, we can run different kind of scenarios we can build. Okay? You can build your own scenarios. Uh, you can, you can yeah, make sequences of a full uh, attack. Or you can say, no, just give me the latest information and threat feed from, um, from FireEye. And let's test that on our environment. So we'll run those scenarios uh, between those actors and your security stack. And then, then it starts with the download of a malicious file, malicious code execution, lateral movement, command and control traffic, and then data exfiltration. All those different devices will be tested, so we know how they should respond. That information is being sent to the director. The director looks at the scene, so we know which result we need to have. Once you fine tune everything, you know, okay, this type of attack is being not uh, noticed by um, every device and it's how they should perform so you're satisfied with the result and that's why we say okay at this point we're, we're satisfied and we create a monitor that monitor will continuously continuously run uh, as scheduled it can run every day every few hours and as soon if the result changes uh, maybe after an alteration of the configuration change so a config configuration change on your firewall and the result is then that maybe it's uh, the download of the malicious file is not blocked anymore. So we will notice that because we are continuously monitoring your, your environment and we can keep on doing that same attack. And when the result is not says it's not good anymore, we can notify you so you can quickly improve and make sure that that possible breach is not a, a security breach not there anymore. We're intelligence driven. So Fire has always been an intelligence driven company. And with Mandiant, they have the best incident responders in the world. And it's that, that seamless integration with the latest threat feed and security that makes uh, Mandiant security validation unique. Uh, today in this call, we also have Lewis here. Um, he's a specialist in managed validation and he can give you some more information on what makes um, Mandiant security validation unique. So Lewis, if you'd like to chip in. Yes, thank you. Um, so what's uh, very unique from uh, Mandian uh, validation is the ability to get uh, an intelligence driven approach. It can be either through our threat intelligence because we're gonna be feeding the technology with the most recent TTPs or it can be integrating with the existing uh, threat intelligence platform, for example, Threat Connect, CrowdStrike, Intel 471, or Anomaly. So what you're gonna be able to do basically is to um, prioritize what's relevant to your business using the threat intelligence. For example, in, in this slide, we can see we have you know all TTPs related to APT33. We know that APT33 <clears throat> is targeting specific industries in specific geography. So what's, um, what managed security validation is going gonna, is gonna to allow you to do is to take the relevant threat groups to your business and then evaluate against um, those threat groups, uh, evaluate your, your security posture against those threat groups. So it's not only about, you know, uh, running attacks, but which uh, attacks are really relevant for your business. Another thing that is <clears throat> very unique from the platform, apart from th the threat intelligence piece, would be the ability to integrate to your security stack, providing not only the attacker perspective, but as well the defensive perspective, because we're going to know which security technologies responded, how, and which security technology is blocked and as well at the same level. Okay, thank you, Louis. 
So next, let's go to a to live demo. So you have an idea about um, how my security validation actually works and not just uh, slides, but the full story. Okay, let's go to our director. Okay, so when you log on to an environment, you'll notice uh, it's still labeled as Verodin. It's what they acquired. Um, but okay, if you log on, you will see the, the map. Um, it's an environment environment map, and it's built out dynamically. So what we first do is we create our security zones, for example, retail east, west, uh, internet. So it's made of internal and external zones. Uh, those can be based on, on network segments, business zone, or even geographic locations. So we create our security zones, and we deploy our actors, and then uh, maintenance validation will automatically build this dynamic map for you. We can see all our different security uh, integrations in place with, for example, the Palo Alto firewall, um, our sandboxes, uh, Firepower Cisco from Cisco, Snort, our proxy SG, so all these different types of technologies. Okay. We can also see different type of actors. We got our network actors, so ex uh, external some internal access with the DMZ, uh, DMZ um, another data center uh, network actor, and also our endpoint actors. So those endpoint actors can be installed on uh, Windows, Mac, or Linux. All those different, all those actors will directly communicate with the director, and they will be responsible of generating the traffic to make sure your security technology is is blocking or or at least detecting something. Those integrations are like we already mentioned before, um, preferably direct, which means it's an API integration, or indirect, and that's because we can identify it based on the logs in the scene. So Snort here is, is in this example is being just uh, no, noticed because we see the log files in the scene. You can see there is a connection between the different types of technology. Um, here we can see how the connection is. So it's a flow between those different segments. Um, it can be unidirectional or bidirectional. Um, it depends of, of, of what, what is possible of a network flow. If we take a look at our content library, we can see we have a lot of different kind of actions. And there's, a, there's a whole um, whole library of different type of actions we can run in your environment. So if you take a look at our active intrusion actions, it will give you some more information about what this action actually does. So it gives you some more information. It maps it automatically on the uh, MITRE ATT&CK framework. It also gives you a uh, description about what we're doing. It will give you an idea where to run. So it says, OK, the source should be internal trusted, so uh, internal segment of your network to external untrusted, which means the internet. It will, it will, it will check or test your um, IDS IPS um, device and or your next-gen firewall. Okay. It will give you an idea about what uh, or, or what dimension you're testing. So the platform is for this attack is Windows. It's a command of control stage. And it gives you all that information. You can even have the, the network um, package to see how it looks like. So it's a malicious file transfer. If you could run that, just give it a few seconds. OK. If you would run that, you could choose your source actor. So for example, uh, I want to check um, something internal. So retail west or, or from a from a desktop. And let's go to the internet and then you can run that. Uh, and then it's going to test your, your um, depending on, on what we're testing, but in this case, it will test your IDS and your next-gen firewall. We can run a single action or we can use an, another type to the filter. So it's a dimension filter we can use. And which we say, okay, 
uh, what do you, what will you want to try to test? Will you test your email? Will you test uh, a web server, a certain application, or you want something else? Okay, that's, so you can specify what type of action you want, you want to use to test your environment. Or we can even group those actions. We can also have um, a library for sequences. We can use either evaluations or sequences, and then we will group actually uh, a bunch of actions together. So in this case, it's a sequence where we're going to test not just one single action, but different types of actions. So the first group is the malware activity, where we will try to download the malware and then execute it on the endpoint and maybe try some uh, command control traffic. Our second group in this sequence is our lateral movement. So let's try to scan our environment and try to go uh, lateral with, with RDP um, protocol. And in the end, we're going to try to do some data exfil. If you run this, you will get a dynamic map again, and you can assign your actors. So you have to say to, to the director, OK, you want to run this uh, sequence. What are the actors who are uh, have to be involved? Because you want to test uh, a certain flow. So we can say, OK, that malicious this will start here. And because we're going to do a file download, it has to go to, to an external one. So the external one in this case is this one. So we are mapping the, so I'm going to zoom it out. So you will see in the fir first uh, group of actions, we will actually test your environment, your sandboxing, uh, your network appliances, uh, and, and your next-gen firewall. And that entire flow will be tested, OK? For the second one, it's lateral movement. So if you want to do the lateral movement, it means it's between um, different internal um, zones. So this one is an internal zone. And this one is another data center. And again, you will see which flow it's going to test and which devices in your security stack will be tested. For the last part, it's data exfil. So again, we will start somewhere internal. And we go to the internet that's external. So that flow again will be tested. And then you could run that. And you could either say, OK, let's schedule this for to do it at a later time, or just run it now. You can repeat some steps specifically for a specific group. Uh, again, you get a choice here. And then you can run that. Um, we're actually not going to run this now. This is a demo environment um, which picks data in it. But the result of something like that would be this. So if you will run that, we will see a pass and a fail. Pass and fail depends on what you actually need. If, if for you a pass is when it's notified, then you can say, OK, if it's notified, it passes. If you want it blocked to be a success, you need to change that. You need to say, OK, it's only a pass if it's also blocked. So in this case, we're going to say if, it's, if there's an event, so if it's notified, it's, for, it, it's a success for us. If we don't block it and we're not notified, then only then it fails. So first, you can see that there actually is an event for the malicious file download, but it's not blocked. Here, you can click on the event. And you can see that actually your uh, your Palo Alto was notified that there, there was a malware in it. But you can see also it's, um, it's detected by your Palo Alto, but it's with wildfire. So it means that there's delay on it. But your Splunk also is notified, but it did not match a correlation rule. So that's something you can tweak. The command and control traffic was actually blocked, so that's good. There's an event from it, but it was also blocked by Palo Alto, so that's good. And we can see that for every action we did. 
So if you take a look at the lateral movement, that scan activity was locked. So, sorry, that's my bad. If we click on the log files, you will see that Snort actually noticed that something was fishy here. The only thing that did not have any event or was blocked is our data exfil. So that's a huge uh, gap in our security stack at this moment. Okay, this should be blocked and, and then you could alter um, your configuration, but here we can see there's not even an event. So that's why we say, okay, that, that's a hard failure for us. Now from a job, you could create a monitor. With a monitor, we're not gonna do all the steps for, to create a monitor because that takes a long for, the, for this demo. But with a monitor, we can actually say um, all these steps, I'm gonna fine tune it, I'm gonna run it again, and that result is, says, is for me okay. Then you're satisfied with the result. And if something happens and the result's not the same anymore, I wanna be notified. So then we talk about our security monitors. We, we have, in this use case, we have more than 20 security monitors in place. So that monitor is based on either an action or a group of actions or a sequence. And we know what result to expect because we, we've run it multiple times. We check the results. We fine tune our, our policies from our different devices in our scene. And every time it runs again, it gives you the same results and you're satisfied. But what if, there was actually a problem because someone changed a firewall rule and maybe now the result's not the same. The download um, is not blocked or there was not no log file to the scene, whatever, but there is something that's different from before. It's not the same result anymore. You will be given an activity and a security alert. And it will give you that information. Why you have a security alert? Because there's a job now, that fails instead of passes. So there, there's something different now. And that's why he gives you that, that result that you're not satisfied anymore because it failed. And in this use case then you will know, okay, I need to adjust something in my security stack because I don't have the same level of protection anymore than before. Another cool feature is our threat actor assurance dashboard. We, we, can, we can have a mechanism to ingest the TTPs from threat intelligence. Um, we can have different feeds, but one of our, our, our feeds is from FireEye itself. It's a FireEye threat intelligence. Um, we can also have some of our partners, like Louis already mentioned. But in, in this way, you can, you can have the latest feeds and you can see how well are you protected against those latest attacks that we see in the wild. So uh, how ready are you as an organization to protect yourself from those um, types of advanced attacks? This gives you an overview about what, um, what your status is against those uh, different kinds of, um, uh, of parties. You will see all your devices, uh, security devices in place who are helping you to, to uh, notice this type of attacks. As you can see, Mimikatz, for example, typical um, for, um, for attackers to get, to get your credentials of a system um, is missed uh, in this environment. You can click on a threat actor and he will give you some more information. So for you as an organization, you can see um, what, what are the typical entities who are targeted uh, by this APT? So if you, for example, are a big energy company, you know that APT tier three is, is likely to attack you. So for you, it's more important that you're actually protected to it for AT, APT tier three than for say another threat actor. What we also have is our report summary. This gives you a quick overview about how well you protect 
uh, in your different, uh, different security zones, or in this case, your business zones. How well are you protected in what stage of the attack? So with a quick overview and nice dashboard, you will see uh, immediately in, in yeah where your, your uh, good points are, but where also are some working points for your environment. So all that information is being presented by the director because it keeps on testing your environment and it will present that information for you so you can know where you should actually make more investments and you should um, focus on. Our effectiveness gauges are, are very cool. Okay, you, you can treat that like you want, what is important for your organization. But for example, if you say, okay, um, malicious trials transfer is very important for me. And let's see how well our products are performing for malicious trans file transfers. You can see your Palo Alto and your Enix Fan Fry are, are actually preventing already a lot of stuff. So we're preventing, we're actually blocking it. We can also see that our detection rate. And then you can see, okay, actually our, our Cisco is not performing as well as we thought as in, uh, for, uh, for an IDS and compared to our SNORT. So you can see maybe I should invest more in, in another type of technology and or you, you have to fine tune, of course, but even after fine tuning, you still are not satisfied with the detection or prevention rate. You can make some other decisions and uh, other investments. Also important is, is our SIEM actually getting all those log files? Is he alerted? Because if the SIEM is not alerted, in most use cases or most companies, you, you won't be notified if there's something happening. So you can see quickly here with some information about where should I invest more uh, and what should be um, my, my key focus at this point. So one of the coolest, I, I think it's one of, one of the coolest features is we can map it entirely on MITRE ATT&CK framework. So first, the initial access. It always starts with initial access. We got all these different secu security technologies in place who should help you uh, make sure there's never initial access. We can deep dive to look at, okay, with a drive-by, which, te which technology is actually uh, protecting my environment? So it gives you the complete overview uh, about in what, what stage of the matter attack um, and what's, what security technology is actually performing well. So based on this, you can make, yeah, first you can make your policies better, but then you can also make the right decision because maybe that security technology that is in place is not the right one for you or your environment. Maybe you are better out there in the market. So it's yeah completely mapped on, uh, on the Mitre Tech framework, and you have all these types of all this kind of information to help you uh, take your uh, security to the next level. Okay, so this was it for our demo. Uh, if we want to conclude, what FireEye can do for you is that first, it's um, it's easy to you, uh, easy to use. Okay, so it, it can be a cloud-based um, setup for the director, and we can prove actually it's not a proof of concept, but a proof of value in five days maximum. So we can directly show you what the benefit is of using security validation. Again, um, if you want to know how you can improve, you need to measure it stop assuming but start measuring and keep on measuring not just one uh one time snapshot of your security with a pen test which is of course also important but we need to continuously keep assessing our environment which makes us different is we have the intelligence okay we we are we are fire eyes so we we know everything that's happening about, about every attack or almost everything um, it's that intelligence that makes sure that the security validation is at the highest level. Like Lewis already said, we're adaptable, we're, we're an open system. 
we get all those API integrations um, with almost every security vendor out there. Um, so we work with almost every security solution out there. So if you have any questions, um, you can ask them now, or if you're looking at the broadcast later, uh, make sure you just uh, send me an email and I'll get back to you so we can answer your questions or we can schedule a meeting or a demonstration. So uh, it's a little bit quicker than I thought it would be. So I apologize uh, if I went too fast, but uh, thank you for taking the time today. Uh, make sure you, you see our other uh, webinar this afternoon at two o'clock. It's about Cloud Advisory and then um, Marco will tell you more about how to protect your multi-cloud environment. Thank you for your time. I'm not sure that maybe Louis, I, maybe I forgot something that you want to mention or I should highlight. Uh, no, all, all good. You talked about the um, uh, proof of concept that's uh, really quick. So if you're interested in uh, doing such a, such a proof of concept, don't hesitate to reach out or if you need any more information, we'll be, we'll be happy to assist. Another thing that's um, maybe useful uh, is a report that we released uh, beginning of this year of some metrics and uh, the value of uh, 100 customers that that have been using the technology for for a year maybe that's something valuable we can share those links with the participants if required to get that report okay perfect thank you Liz. so you you heard it if you're interested in that report um make sure you contact us and we will provide you the, the reports and all necessary information so again, thank you all for um, participating today or at a later time um, and have a nice day. And remember this afternoon, it's Marco's session. It's very cool about how to protect your multi-cloud environment. Thank you all and have a nice day.